Hi everybody. Welcome back to session 3 of this chapter 1 called The Living World. You are identified by your name. So like that all of us are identified by our name. All the scientific names are approved by ICD. Your name should always be in bracket. Never write the scientific names in bracket. Species name should not be followed by genus name. That is a rule. Welcome back to session three of this chapter one called the Living World. What did we learn in the last session? As you all know, we learned about the living organisms. What are living organisms? What are the characteristic features of living organisms? Like we studied about metabolism, then we studied about reproduction, cellular organization, and then we moved on to a very very important characteristic feature that is about the consciousness. So all those were the characteristic features of the living organism. So as I said, all living organisms have a definite characters so what was the what were those characters like we came across growth and development metabolism reproduction then as i said cellular organization and consciousness what are we going to study in today's session then we are going to study about a very very important concept called nomenclature so each one of us have an identity right each one of us are identified by our names for example myself my name is bishobarani so i am identified by my name you are identified by your name so like that all of us are identified by our names so name gives uh, uh, it adds more to a individual so giving a name is called as nomenclature so what are we going to study in today's session that is about nomenclature then we are going to study about what is binomial nomenclature and what are the rules of uh, binomial nomenclature so how do we give the scientific names who approves the scientific names for the both of for the plants and the animals moving on to the first very important concept of the today's session that is about nomenclature don't we find there are millions of plants and animals existing on this planet earth so it is very difficult for us to identify identify them how do we identify them we identify them by their names like we have the local names so as you know we are staying in karnataka we speak kannada so many of the words are in local language right so even as i said each and every organism has its own identity and that identity is marked by its name right so as i said there are millions of plants and animals present in the world and we know them by their local names of languages but don't you find that there is a difference in the languages from a state to state so what we speak here in kannada may differ in tamil nadu or it may differ in um, uh, that is in uh, uh, bombay so like that so each name differs according to the local language but as you know that these local names or languages vary from a place to place or even from a country to country or from a state to state so probably Uh, what is the difficulty of this uh, local names then probably it may lead toward confusion we may use one uh, like for example like uh, in kannada we use the word called tomato in tamil nadu they use a the word called thakali so it varies from a state to state so local names are different right it varies from a state to state or from a place to place so what does it lead to it leads to what confusions in identifying such organisms right so what is so very important about the names then so one name should be given that is uh, it which is universal all over the world for example like homo sapien the scientific name of man is called homo sapien in kannada we call manushya so like that we, in different languages they use different words for man different local names right so that means to say that the local names will definitely lead toward confusion and it is not universal it varies from a state to state or from a country to country so what is the need here the very important need is the names should be universal wherever you go throughout the world it should be common for example like homo sapien homo sapien is the 
साइंटिफिक नेम गिवन टू मैन विच इज यूनिवर्सल यू गो टू एनी प्लेस और एनी कंट्री इट इज वन एंड द सेम एंड वन मोर वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दिस वर्ड दिस नेम कॉल्ड होमोसेपियन इज नॉट गिवन फॉर एनी अदर ऑर्गेनिज्म सो इट इज द ओनली ऑर्गेनिज्म विच इज गिवन द नेम एज होमोसेपियन सो ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी नो कन्फ्यूजन राइट सो नेमिंग इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट और नॉमन क्लेचर इज वेरी वेरी important you might have come across when we are all small baby i think there was a big function celebrated uh, that is a naming ceremony because throughout our life we are identified by our names each one of us have a identity and we are identified by our names right i hope you all agree for this so what is it there are millions of plants and animal species present in the world and we know about them by their local names or languages but as i said these local names or languages would vary from a place to place or from a state to state or from a country to country so what will it lead to it may lead to what confusion in identifying such organisms i think you can see in this beautiful picture the common name in english we call it as cat kannada we use the word called becko right so cat is the name which is given according to our convenience the local names are given according to our convenience or according to our means of communication how we communicate with each other right but the scientific name of cat is felis catus so this is called as the universal name this is called the scientific name this is called scientific name this is universal scientific names are universal whereas the local names vary from a place to place or from a state to state or from a country to country dog the scientific name is canis familiaris elephant is called proboscidea elephantidae then goat is called capra hercus lion is called panthero leo tiger is called panthero tigris carrot in everyday life we use a word called carrot the scientific name is called docus carota this is the scientific name common name is what carrot why do we use this common name it is for our convenience for our communication you go to a market and ask for docus carota they laugh at us if you ask them for carrot they will give us because this is a scientific name common names are used for our convenience for our communication for our daily needs we use the common names and p pisum sativum the scientific name is pisum sativum or in kannada we use the word called batani right so these are the local names p carrot batani all these are the local names but these are scientific names which are universal you go to any place or any country pisum sativum means it means p docus carota means what it means carrot so it is universal right so there will be no confusion so it is one and the same all over the world so you call it as what universal names for example like banana banana is called musa paradisicum musa paradisicum so in kannada we use the word called baale hannu in english we call it as banana but what is the scientific name musa paradisicum this is the scientific name which is universal scientific name which is universal so common names are given for our convenience for our uh, means of communication which may also cause what confusion you go to some other place and use the same la local language what we are using here and you ask the same uh, 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 if you name the same animal and a plant they may, they may not come to know it because it is different language according to their language it means something different but as i said uh, definitely the scientific names are not going to cause any confusion and it is universal hope you have understood what is the significance of nomenclature so what is nomenclature giving a name and name is what identity we all of us are identified by our name so like that there are millions of plants and animals on this planet beautiful planet earth which are identified by their local names or languages which may cause confusion so that is the reason why there is a need for uh, introducing what we call it as the scientific names both for the plants as well as for the animals 
So, as I said, there is a need to standardize what? The naming of living organisms in such a way that a particular organism is known to all by the same name all over the world. How do we define the word called nomenclature then? What is nomenclature? That is naming of a particular organism in such a way that it is known to all by the same name is called what it is called nomenclature right so it is the need for us to standardize the naming of living organism in such a way that a particular organism is known to all by the same name all over the world called nomenclature in simple words if you want to say we use the word called naming right now just now I told that we need to have uh, the scientific names or right but who approves the scientific names can I just come out with some name and tell this is a name for uh, so and so plant or uh, animal no there are certain things which are the principle that is biologists have established the procedures to assign the scientific name to a living organism which is acceptable all over the world. The biologist should accept the scientific name then only it will be introduced or then only it will be brought into uh, use if not it will not be used so that means to say who is that who which is that organization which is going to approve the scientific names approve the scientific names we also use the word called biological names Scientific names are biological. For example, man, homo sapien is a scientific name. Homo sapien. Pisum sativum. Pisum sativum is a scientific name. This is for man and this is for P. This is called scientific name. Common name, man. Here common name is P. These are called the local names, but these are called scientific names. Who approves this scientific names then? All the plant, all the scientific names for plants are approved by ICBN. What is ICBN then? International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. What does ICBN stand? All the scientific names are approved by ICBN. Then only it will be brought into use. The scientific names. For example, Pisum sativum. It is not the name which I have given or which you have given. It is the name which is approved by ICBN. Then only it will be universal and Throughout the world, it will be one and the same name. You cannot change it again. So, it will be universal. Universality means what? One and the same. Anywhere you go, Homo sapien means it stands for what? For man. But local names vary from a place to place or from a state to state or from a country to country. All botanical names that for example i told banana uh, musa paradisicum is a botanical name approved by whom by icbn icbn stands for what international all throughout the world international code for botanical nomenclature right then who approves the names the scientific names for animals then just now i told homo sapien homo sapien is a scientific name for man who then felis catus felis domestica or uh, Felis uh, Domestica. So all these are the scientific names. Who approves the scientific names for animals? It is ICZN. For plants it is ICBN and for animals it is ICZN. What does ICZN stand for? ICBN stands for what? Expand. This is asked usually in the examination for one more question. Expand ICBN. What is ICBN standing for? International Code for Botanical Nomenclature. And ICZN stand for what? International Code for Zoological Nomenclature. All the scientific names for animals are approved by ICZN. And all the names, the scientific names for the plants are approved by ICBN. Hope you have understood the, what is the importance of the scientific names. So what is it? We need to standardize the naming of all the living organisms in such a way that it is known to all by the same name all over the world. And what do you call that as? Nomenclature. Right. And who approves all this uh, nomenclature that, that is giving a scientific name for a plant or for an animal is approved by ICBN and ICZN. That is as I said, biologists have established the procedures to assign the scientific name to a living organism which is 
acceptable all over the world which is acceptable all over the world based on the principles and criteria which are provided by icb and that is international code for botanical nomenclature for all the scientific names that is given for the plants and iczn that is the international code of zoological nomenclature for all the scientific names of plants hope you have understood what is nomenclature and how do we who approves the scientific name the biologists would have approved then only the scientific names are brought into practice or into use who is that which is that organization which lays down the principles and the criteria for giving a scientific name for plants it is icbn and for animals it is iczn hope you have understood the concept of what is icbn and what is iczn and what is nomenclature then as i said the scientific name ensures that each organism has only one name throughout the world just now i told homo sapien homo sapien is a word it is a scientific name for man it is universal all throughout the world homo sapien means man there is no any other organism which is again named as homo sapien it is the only organism that is man is only organism which is named as homo sapien that is what it means by this sentence what does it the scientific name ensures that each organism has only one name throughout the world so that such a name has not been used for any other organism homo sapien means it is understood clearly that it is only man right so there is no any other organism which is named as homo sapien that is what i said it is universality and only one organism is given that particular name which is not given for any other organism so that means each organism will have only one scientific name uh, genus may vary but the species uh, uh, the genus may be the same but the species may vary so they therefore biologists accepted one concept called binomial nomenclature the very word itself will tell you what do you mean by by two nomial means naming binomial means giving two names nomenclature means what naming binomial means two giving two names to one example is called binomial nomenclature for example let us take always the very good example of fossils man homo sapien homo sapien so this is called binomial nomenclature so man this is one name and this is one giving two names to one example and this is an example of what this is a scientific name of what it is a scientific name of man so homo sapien means what it is a binomial nomenclature giving two names to one example is called binomial nomenclature that is the first name refers to what the first name refers to genus and the second name sapien refers to species which is also called species epithet or species specific also it is called you can see here specific epithet in which the first name represents genus genus name and the second one represents the species name and this type of giving two names to one example is called binomial nomenclature hope all of you can see this beautiful picture of the scientist who is he he is carolus linnaeus he is the man behind this binomial nomenclature he is the man who proposed this binomial nomenclature who is he he is carolus linnaeus what is his contribution his contribution is the binomial nomenclature what is binomial nomenclature giving two names to one example wherein the first name refers to genus and the second name refers to species so this way of giving two names to one example is called binomial nomenclature and who is called the father of binomial nomenclature it is and he is also called as father of taxonomy what do you mean by taxonomy classification imagine if classify that is what i am going to explain in the next slide right so who is he he is carolus carlinius also he is called as carlinius and he is the man who proposed what binomial 
nomenclature what is binomial nomenclature giving two names to one example for example let us take the example of man man is called what scientific name is what homo sapien can you all see one thing here capital this is this is called genus name and this is called species name you can see that always the genus name starts starts with capital letter followed by the small letters and the species name always starts with a small letter followed by small letters so this is the way you have to write the scientific name so giving two names to one example is called binomial nomenclature which was proposed by carolus linnaeus hope you have understood the scientific name ensures what that each organism has only one name throughout the world so that such a name has not been used for any other organism therefore biologists have accepted what binomial nomenclature that includes two names such as the genus name and the species name in which the first name represents what the genus name and the second name refers ref, uh, represents what the species name and this kind of naming system was given by whom by carolus linnaeus hence he is the man who proposed this binomial nomenclature let me ask in exam who proposed the binomial nomenclature so it is Car carolus linnaeus who proposed this binomial nomenclature or what is binomial nomenclature nomenclature what is binomial nomenclature giving two names to one example where in the first name refers to genus name and the second name refers to species name is called by uh, is called binomial nomenclature but there are certain rules and regulations laid down uh, to while writing the scientific name as i said whenever you write the scientific name the genus name should start with capital for example man homo so this is the capital the genus name should always start with a capital letter followed by small letters and the species name should start with a small letter and also end with a small letter this is species so this is the rule of binomial nomenclature this is the way you we have to write the binomial now we cannot write like in whatever manner we want it is not accepted so the only way of accepting the binomial nomenclature is you have to start the, the genus name with capital letter followed by small letter and you, you can see that there is a small gap here space there space has to be given for what for species name hope you have understood what is this binomial nomenclature and who proposed this binomial nomenclature carolus linnaeus and he is also the man behind taxonomy that is classification imagine there are millions of organisms present on this beautiful planet earth and is it possible for us to identify all the organisms together definitely not what is the possible way of uh, identifying this uh, plants and animals on this planet earth it is due to classification classification is also called as what taxonomy and who classified the plants and animals it was carolus linnaeus hence is rightly called as what father of taxonomy right hope you have understood the concept of binomial nomenclature as i said binomial nomenclature let us understand this binomial nomenclature with certain examples right so i think the examples what i have given here will make you understand what is binomial nomenclature what is binomial nomenclature how do we define if they might ask for one mark or what is binomial nomenclature it is a scientific method of naming an organism by two names it is a scientific method right it is a scientific method of naming an organism by two names the first name refers to genus name and the second name refers to what species right now as i said now let us study some of the examples mangifera indica is a this is a scientific name these are the scientific names scientific names and these are the common names as i said what are the common names used for for our convenience for our means of communication of, according to our local language right now what is the scientific name for mango and one more very very important thing you have to bear in mind while writing the scientific name never write the scientific names in bracket only the common names should be written in bracket and as i said this is the binomial nomenclature what is the first name refers to mangifera refers to genus name 
and indica refers to species name what is binomial nomenclature giving two names what does the first name refers to genus what is the second that is the second name refers to indica first name refers to genus and the second name refers to indica so what is the scientific name of mango mango the scientific name of mango is mangifera indica which is universal you go to any country throughout the world mango means mango is a common name which we use but mangifera indica is the common name it is a universal name wherever you go they'll understand that mangifera indica means it is only mango and only mango is given this scientific name no other organism or no other plant is given this name right so like that we'll come across potato common name is potato right what is the scientific name solanum tuberosum you can see here always the, the genus name starts with capital letter and the species name will start with a small letter you can make out here here m capital i small p capital l small p capital p small f capital d small then h capital small so why always as i said the first name is what genus name the first name is genus name should be always in what should start with capital letter and what are the second these are all the species name should be in small alphabet small letter this is a rule as i said who the, there are certain rules and regulations for writing the binomial nomenclature or for writing the scientific names where always the first name which stands for genus should be in capital letter followed by small letter and the second name that is a species name should start with a small letter and also followed by small letters right so what is the scientific name for lion panthera leo then for leopard panthera pardus for tiger panthera tigress right then felis domestica the common household cat what we we are what we have at home it is called felis domestica then homo sapien that is man so these are all the scientific names hope you have understood what is binomial nomenclature so hope what is binomial nomenclature the scientific method of naming an organism by two names where the first name refers to genus and the second name refers to species for example mango mangifera indica then potato solanum tuberosum brinjal solanum melangena see the scientific name of brinjal in common uh, like in our local language in kannada we use it as badnekai right but see here in english we call it as brinjal but see the scientific name solanum melangena lion who is called the king of the forest panthera leo then the leopard that is panthera pardus cat Felis domestica, man, Homo sapien. So these are all binomial nomenclature. Where the first name, so you can make out like this. This is genus name. This is the genus name. And what are all this? This is the species name. And as I said, common name should always be in bracket. Never write the scientific names in. bracket hope you have understood what is binomial nomenclature right now what are the advantages already we i just uh, explained what is the need for standardizing the names what is the need for writing the scientific names as i said scientific names will not cause confusion whereas the local names of the languages differ uh, from a place to place or from a state to state or from a country to a country which may cause definitely cause confusions so in order to avoid confusions we have to use what the scientific names which is approved by for all the plant that is for the scientific names of plant is approved by icbn the scientific names for uh, animals is approved by iczn international code of botanical nomenclature and international code of zoological nomenclature so what are the advantages so binomial nomenclature avoids confusions uh, arise by vernacular names what do you mean by vernacular names common names 
common names will definitely cause confusion we may use some uh, uh, like uh, way it means something for our uh, local language and you go to some other state it may mean something else so definitely there will be chances of confusion but the scientific names will never cause confusion that is the greatest advantage of word binomial nomenclature or the scientific names we use a word called scientific scientific names so it gives universal recognition to the individual organism each organism which is given a scientific name is recognized throughout the world by its scientific name so it gives universal recognition to the individual organism so this is the advantage of binomial nomenclature so what is it binomial nomenclature avoids what avoids confusion arise by vernacular names what do you mean by vernacular names common names it gives what universal recognition to the individual organisms right moving across the rules of binomial nomenclature as i said there are millions of organisms present in the world and as i said we know them by their local names or languages which cause what confusions and these local languages as i said would vary from a place to place even from a country so what would it lead to confusions so in order to that so always the scientific names should start with uh, the first name should be what the first name should be always the genus name you should not write the species name first always the first name what should come first genus name second what should come second name is what second name is species name this is a rule rule made by this is a rule of binomial nomenclature whenever you are writing the scientific name which is a binomial nomenclature the first name should always be a genus followed by the species name species name should not be followed by genus name that is a rule very very important rule and one more rule is what always the genus name should start with a capital letter followed by small letters and there should be a small gap and this, there should be a small gap between the genus name and the species name and the species name should start with a small letter followed by small letter for example i told you let us take always an example of homo sapien homo homo sapien i said what is it it should genus name always the first name should be genus the second name should be the species name first name should start with capital letter followed by small letters there should be a small space and as i said the species name should start with a small letter this is the first and foremost rule of binomial nomenclature hope you have understood what is the first rule right moving on to the next rule that is scientific name should generally be in latin language or else in english term or should be latinized so the scientific name should generally be in what latin languages or else in english languages or it should be latinized this is another very very important second rule of binomial nomenclature sometimes the name of the author who described the organism or who has given the nomenclature to that particular organism should be written in abbreviation and that is called author citation for example linnaeus linnaeus gave the scientific name for mango as mangifera indica so he is the scientist who gave this name called mangifera indica for mango so he is the author so you call that as what author citation who is what is author citation whoever gives the scientific name the that author that is the author's name is written as an abbreviation and that is called author's citation you will understand this example better like this mangifera indica lin what does this lin indicate it is linnaeus what is mangifera indicating genus name Man what is indica indicating it is indicating species what is this lean author 
author who, who has given the name. So the first name refers to genus name which is in capital letter. The second name refers to species name which is the which is in small letter and what is this lin lin refers to what the author so this indicates that this species name was first described by linnaeus so these are all the rules and regulations which are laid down to write the scientific names or the binomial nomenclature all these are very very important from examination point of view they might ask for uh, what is binomial nomenclature and what are the rules and regulations for the binomial nomenclature Hope you have understood all the concepts what I have explained in today's session. Right, as I said, each one of us are identified by our beautiful names. Each one of us have a name. And this name, what is it for? It is for identity. Throughout our life, we are identified by our name. So the same concept is explained in today's session. What is nomenclature? Because there are millions of organisms, living organisms existing on this beautiful planet Earth. How are they identified? They are identified by their names of course but if they are identified by their local names then definitely it is going to cause confusion because the local language varies from a place to place or from a country to country so what is the need to, uh, very important need is to standardize the names and this naming that is standardizing the names uh, into what the scientific name is very very much essential why because the scientific names are universal you go to any place or any country the scientific names are one and the same and one more very important thing is what the scientific names are given for only one organism no other organism will have that scientific name so this is a very very important concept from examination point of view hope you have understood the all the concepts what i have explained in today's session right so i'll be back with some more interesting concepts in the coming session till then thank you and goodbye